Welcome to Sacred Heart Parish and to today's liturgy, including visitors and those joining us through live streaming. If you have not donated to this year's Diocesan Annual Catholic Appeal, you may still do so. Your gift supports Catholic charities, our seminary formation program, Catholic schools in the diocese, and young excuse me, and youth and young adult ministries. Pledges and donations can be made by completing the pledge card you received in the mail. I think there's some over there too. And returning it back to Sacred Heart Parish. Pledge cards are also available at the doors of the church. Please prayerfully consider making a pledge today. If you would like to make a pledge with your credit card, log on to the diocesan website. The address is on the pledge envelope. During Lent, Stations of the Cross are celebrated at 6 p.m. on Fridays. Confessions have been permanently moved to Saturdays from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. And Saturday Mass, as you know, is at 5. Restrooms are located in the parish center lobby to my right, your left. And now for our liturgy. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Lent. Our celebrant is Father Sheehan, and he is assisted by Deacon Federico Drachenberg. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. It's great to see you all here this uh, afternoon. Isn't five o'clock a great time for Saturday evening Mass? Wonderful, wonderful, 5 p.m. We welcome you and also those following the celebration and live streaming, those in our parish center and also out in the plaza. There's a beautiful... Um, icon of the Transfiguration. If you get a chance, you can have a look at it sometime. <clears throat> and uh, it shows Jesus being transfigured, and Moses and Elijah from the Old Testament, and Peter, James, and John flat on the ground. They were so amazed at what they saw. They got a glimpse of heaven, a glimpse of the resurrection. And Peter said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. We can say the same thing. Lord, it is good for us to be here in God's presence. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. 
O God, who hath commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, said the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living I will walk walk before before the Lord in the land of the living I believed even when I said I am greatly afflicted Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones I will walk Walk before the the Lord in the land of the living. living. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk Walk before the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, 
in your midst, O Jerusalem. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. <clears throat> who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, in your heart, in your lips, and properly proclaim the good news of salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus along with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to uh, reflect on the first reading, uh, Genesis 22. Isn't that an awful story of Abraham being asked to take his son up to the mountain and to uh, sacrifice him and offer him up as a holocaust? Could you imagine if you were asked to? Uh, take your son or daughter and offer them up in sacrifice. It's a real awful story, but it has a great message. It must not be read as a, a God who is cruel and uh, insensitive uh, to his people, but it must be read in a different way, 
And uh, the way we see it is that God gives us the right ordering of love. The right ordering of love in that reading. And uh, he kind of uh, jolts us into reality, wakes us up, and reminds us of a very important value in life. The right ordering of love. Flannery O'Connor, who was a great Catholic writer, Catholic writer of uh, short stories and uh, fiction and so on and so forth. She wrote at one time, sometimes you have to shout at the spiritually deaf. You have to shout out loud because they won't hear you in order to jolt, to jolt them into reality and uh, to, to jolt them out of their uh, lethargy, so to speak, and insensitivity. And uh, that's a good point. So this gospel really kind of touches us. And many people, I'm sure, have read it with kind of fear and trembling. But in the early church, it was a great source of reflection for the Jewish people because it had a message. And now what is that message that it has? And the message is this. <clears throat> we go to St. Augustine, who was a great teacher and a great saint and a great church person. And he said this. To love God first and to love everybody else and everything else for the sake of God. That is the real purpose of life. To love God first and to love every other person, every person and everything for the sake of God. And that we need to hear those words. They're very, very important. It's a kind of an adage for life. And it's good to write it down. Coming from St. Augustine, or to put it in your screen of your computer, or your iPad, or wherever. Because to get that right, we're able to live a meaningful life. But to get it wrong, we fall into sin and selfishness and evil and uh, dysfunction and disintegration. To get it right, we can live a meaningful life. To get it wrong, it's another question. So uh, very clear, to love God first and to love everybody else and everything else for the sake of God. Deuteronomy chapter 6, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And Jesus added, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Very important words. In the New Testament, we hear the words, seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Seek first, first, the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these other things will be given to you besides. There's a story of the man who was uh, asked to follow Jesus. And he said, I'm busy. I've got to bury my father. And you know what Jesus said? That the dead bury their dead. That was not condemning family life or funerals or anything else, no. But the first value was following Jesus. The prayers of the Mass even, when we have the glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. God first, first, first. Love God first. And then everybody else and everything else for the sake of God. Very good message. So I guess a key 
question that we can all ask ourselves is, who is the love of your life? Who is the love of your life? Think about it. It's a great question. Who or what is the love of your life? Is it your spouse, your family, your home, your automobile, your computer, your iPad, your cell phone, your uh, hobbies, your special television um, story that you follow? What is the love of your life? Golf. Think about it. What is the love of your life? Power, prestige, possessions, all these things are fine. But we have to understand that all of these things have to be put in the proper context to live a meaningful life and the proper ordering of love is God first and then all these other things besides. Look at the Abraham. God promised him that he'd be the father of a great nations and great peoples and that his uh, descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sands in the seashore. And here he was, an old man. And he was getting older, and his wife was getting older. Is this promise going to be fulfilled? We have no family. God keeps his promises. Sarah, in her 90th year, conceived a child and gave birth to a son, Isaac. Isn't that amazing how God works? It's amazing. God keeps his promises. And then, getting to the first reading, Genesis 22. Abraham, here I am. Abraham, take your son Isaac, the one whom you love. and go to the land of Moriah and offer him up in sacrifice. In other words, to kill him. Wow. Wow. That's tough. That's tough. Did Abraham say, no, 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 I can't? Not a word. Abraham left with his son Isaac and they headed to the land of Moriah up in the hill. And we know the rest of the story. He was about to take the life of his son Isaac. And the angel of God appeared to him. No, 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 no. Don't put your hand on the boy. Don't touch him. You have proved your love for God. by being ready to sacrifice your only son up to him. Amazing. Amazing. That is quite a story. What's the lesson that you and I should take from that reading? Here in this world below, all of the things we love and we all love some things, certain things with a great passion. Every single person, no matter who you are. What's your greatest love? That must be always seen in the context of a higher good, a higher love. And the great adage of life that St. Augustine gives us, love God first and love everybody else and everything else for the sake of God. That's tough. That is tough. That's not easy. That's not easy. 
And that was people, probably the greatest, the greatest question throughout the scriptures, and even in our own day, the greatest question is the meaning of life and the purpose of life. If we get that right, we'll be able to live a meaningful and fulfilling life. If we get it wrong, we will fall into all kinds of sin and dysfunction and disintegration. It's a great question, a great question. Are you listening? The purpose of our life is to love God first and to love everybody else and everything else for the sake for the sake of God. Abraham is a perfect model for all of us. So, Professor of Faith now, and you can respond, I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered and died on the cross, rose to life again, and descended into heaven? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now we pray for all of our needs. For the church, that our time apart with the Lord this Lenten season will transfigure us more fully into the likeness of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, as he journeys to the ancient Christian cities of Iraq to stand with the church of that nation which has suffered so much persecution for adhering to the gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people throughout the world whose faith is tested in circumstances beyond human understanding, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the medical and military families whose relationships are strained by the stress of their service and the trauma that remains, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are afflicted with COVID-19 and other illnesses, injury, or disease, including Mark Arvin, Patricia Ross, Xavier Tan, Chelsea Favisac, Jaime Gonzalez Luna. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, Robert Himmelberger, Irish Flynn, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we offer in the silence of our hearts, knowing that Jesus intercedes for us still. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We lift up these prayers and petitions and also those that are still unspoken through the intercession of Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us.
My sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his, his glory to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth. And before the, your majesty, without end, we acclaim, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, John and Ramon, his auxiliaries, Bishop Emeritus Robert, 
the clergy, religious, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us uh, give a signal of peace to each other. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us stand and pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now in the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. And bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O oh Lord, with a blessing that endures forever. And keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory 
whose beauty he showed in his holy body in the amazement of his apostles. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you all for participating in the Mass this evening and uh, all of our uh, liturgical ministers and all of our volunteers. We're very, very grateful to all of you. Uh, volunteers are very important because we've got a lot of people now coming to Mass. And that's wonderful, wonderful. And um, just a reminder, the um, annual Catholic Appeal is uh, still on. And we're very grateful to those who've returned their envelopes and made their commitment to the annual Catholic Appeal. If you haven't done so already, you might be sure you have an envelope. You'll find them at the exits of the church. We'd like to encourage everybody to participate. That would be great. We'd appreciate that very, very much so that we can make our goal here for Sacred Heart. And just enjoy this uh, weekend. God has blessed us with beautiful weather. And we enjoy it even though we're restrained in a lot of ways uh, to stay at home, etc., etc. But things are looking up and getting better. We need have a positive outlook, right? Sure. The Lord be with you. <laughs> May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Hello, how are you?